So, it's October 22nd, and you've just received your ballot for BC's electoral reform referendum. And you think to yourself, holy smithers, how the fuck am I supposed to sort this all out before my ballot's due on November 30th? If only I hide a helpful video somewhere that could help sort it all out, then I'd be golden. Well, worry no more. This is This Year Vancouver. My name's Josh Mesmer, and my mission is to have this simplified. BC's electoral reform referendum. This following simplified video is actually just the excerpt from the end of a longer explained version of this video. So if you're just here to get a quick refresher or to just get some help with how you should vote on the referendum, you've come to the right place. But if any time during this video you find yourself getting lost or you just really like to get some more info, then the explained version of this video is probably where you're gonna wanna go. It's about 24 minutes long and goes into a lot of depth into how each system works, how it succeeds, and how it fails. So let's start with the very basics. We all get that we're voting on something, but on what exactly? Well, it's all about the system that we use to elect our provincial government here in BC. Basically, what will our ballots look like on voting day, and how will our votes be translated into seats in our legislature, the big room in Victoria where everyone yells at each other. The referendum will have no effect on your city council elections and no effect on Canada-wide elections. This is all and only about British Columbian elections. And the referendum itself is actually quite simple. There's only two questions. Number one, would you like to keep our current first-past-the-post system, or would you like to use a proportional representation system? And number two, if we change to a proportional system, which of these three versions do you prefer? Dual member, mixed member, or rural urban? Simple, except what the hell's gate are those systems? Let's compare all of the systems one more time. If you really like the idea of having a very small riding where your MLA is very local to you, you might want to support first past the post because it's going to have the smallest ridings. With dual member, most ridings are going to get close to doubling in size, and with rural urban, some of the urban ridings might even get bigger than that. None of the ridings are likely to get any bigger than your city as a whole though, so none of the systems are that bad for local representation. Of all the proportional systems though, I think that mixed member is the best for local representation, because it allows you to have two votes. So you can still vote for your favorite party, but if there's also a local candidate that you really like from a different party, you can vote for them too. If you think that it's important for the ballots to be as simple and easy to understand as possible, then both first past the post and dual member proportional are really good choices for that. Both only need a single vote on the paper. Most of the mixed member systems require two votes, which for local representation is a plus, but especially with open list systems can get pretty complicated. Rural urban is a little simpler, but in urban ridings you're going to be able to rank candidates, which can get a little confusing. If you really do like this ability to rank your ballots though, so that you can be sure your vote doesn't get wasted or split, then rural urban is your best and only option. Just be sure to remember that you only get ranked ballots in urban areas, so if you're in a rural riding, you're out of luck all round. If you really like the idea of a strong majority government that can get things done quickly, then first past the post is the best choice. The other systems can result in majority governments, but it's less common. If you don't like the idea of a single party having all the power, and would prefer more debate and compromise on issues, you'll probably prefer any of the proportional systems, because they usually result in minority governments. First past the post can result in minorities too, but here it's more rare. If you care about parity between the percentage of votes and the percentage of seats that each party wins, you're going to want to vote for any of the proportional systems. First past the post isn't awful, it's not like you're going to get any inverted results, but the proportional systems are far better here. If you want the candidate that the most amount of people will be okay with to win, you should vote for rural urban, because the ranked ballots are the best way to discern that. If instead you want the candidate that is the most people's first choice to win, you should vote for the other three, because that's how those systems work. If you don't like the idea of the party creating their own ranked list of candidates that will get seats, then you shouldn't vote for mixed member or rural urban if you live in a rural area. In the other three systems, first past the post, dual member, and urban ridings in rural urban, all the candidates that win seats are the most popular candidates that election, although they all calculate that slightly differently. Again, just remember that in all the systems, the parties are pre-selecting who gets to run in all of the ridings before you get a chance to vote, so there's kind of a list in all systems anyway. Alright, so you can look at this chart and decide which features are more or less important to you, and use that to decide your favorite system. If you decide that first past the post is your favorite system, you should vote for first past the post in the first question on the ballot, and then you can rank the proportional systems from your least hated to your most hated. These rankings will then be counted up the exact same way as the candidates are in rural urban. If you like all of the proportional systems, you should vote for proportional on the first ballot question, and then rank the proportional systems from your most favorite to your least favorite. If you only like one or two of the proportional systems and hate the others, you have a couple choices. 
You can vote for proportional on the first question, and then only rank the ones that you like on the second question, and then hope that the version that you dislike doesn't win. But if you really hate one of the proportional systems and really don't want to take a chance with it, it's possible that, even though you really do like the other two proportional systems, you don't want to take the risk on the third one, and so you just vote for first past the post. If you do so, you can still rank your favorite options in the second question. I wouldn't recommend this method and would say that if you like any proportional system, you should just take the risk, but it's worth noting that this is an option for you anyway. I hope that this all makes sense, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below, or take a look at some of the resources that I've linked in the description. If you enjoyed this, the absolute best thing that you can do to help is to share this video on social media, and I also have a Patreon if you want to and can afford it. I've also started up an Instagram page, so if you post your Vancouver photos with the hashtag ThisYearVancouver, I'm going to start posting some of those up there. And with that, I'll see you guys again in October for Vancouver Municipal Election Overview. Thanks again.